The title of this exhibition is taken from two unlikely sources, a poem of the same name by Michael Andaiki and a 17th century painting technique named after the French landscape painter Claude Lorraine. A Claude Lorraine glass, as originally named, was a small mirror device used by landscape painters to totally flatten a natural scene and render its features in two dimensions. In this sense, the reference is both formalist and thematic, as the process of utilizing a Claude glass forced an artist to turn their back to the scene, looking obliquely at subject quite literally over their shoulder. Attendant on a backwards view, this optic is manifest in the myriad references evident in Lynch's recent work, mining the seam of the traditions of the romantics and the sublime, the picturesque, the concept of the tableau vivant, the Bruegelian chronicler of everyday revelry, as well as the hollow film stills of Hopper, or all grist in Lynch's mill. Finding greater resonance and currency in the aesthetic and compositional construction evident in the medium of painting, spanning a considerable period of time, thought, technique and intent, Lynch has attached his retrospective semiotics to key works by Caravaggio, Rembrandt, Friedrich, Seurat and Hopper. These artists and their attendant works are further to analyse the role played by their relationship to relevant historical periods and schools, notably the romantic concept of the sublime, the tableau vivant and the Claude glass itself. It is the role of the tableau vivant, meaning literally the living picture, that perhaps holds a key point of access. This mode of performance, and in turn the former aesthetic compositions created, was used extensively in the 18th century to produce sequential freeze narratives on theatre stages, with one stage scene followed by another to unfold a specific story, a series of parables or to recreate historical events, free of the production issues related to live performances. Lynch's recent work references this mode in his portrayal of the social scenes acted out by young revelers in nightclubs, at music concerts and parties around the country. This urban folly is coupled with representations of fashion shows, musicians performing both on and off stage, and abstractions on life on the road. In the face of this, Lynch contrasts youthful abandon with several key works on concurrent social issues and events, notably HIV activism, rural poverty and excess. Lynch's own role as a chronicler of these seemingly unscripted and unrehearsed theatres resonate further with the historical precedent evidenced in the 15th century work of the painter Peter Bruegel, whose candid warts and all depictions of the revelries of everyday people captured social life in rural Netherlands. To capture life unfiltered, he would revel with his subjects, embody their roles and modes to produce remarkably honest images of life during this time. His optic was neither concerned with judgment, morality or censure, but rather the unbiased representation of life and all its clumsiness. Stendhal said beauty is aligned with hope and art promising happiness. Such a framing makes Peyton Lynch's romantic leanings. A Claude Glass is a layered, subtle thesis in optimism. There is disquiet and longing to these works coupled with an uneasy familiarity and overarched by a low hum of desire. For me it is these sentiments that keep the images meaning and the idiosyncratic languages just at arm's length. A robust mist sits afore their bow as they ply their trade through the murky waters of cultural currency, and it is from this mist that they source their power. In a culture rendered near blind by the plethora of visual stimuli, a claw glass articulates through a sculptor's means that rare theatre of photography's uncertain polarity between painting and cinema.